This is ABC 7 Extra. Welcome to ABC 7 Extra. I'm Stephanie Valle. For the next half hour, we're saying farewell to our longtime general manager, Kevin Lovell. This week, Kevin retired after more than 40 years in television news, many of those years at KVIA. Kevin was a sports anchor, a news reporter, and our news director for several years before taking over as general manager in 1999. And last week, he held his retirement party downtown at the El Paso Community Foundation, and many familiar faces were there to wish him well on his next adventure. Notably, Kevin was the longest serving general manager of a commercial TV station in Texas. He called it the passing of the torch as he hands over the job title and responsibilities to KVIA's longtime news director, Brenda Band the Swan. Before I speak to both Kevin and Brenda about the station's future, here's an inside look at Kevin's historic run. Breaking news on ABC 7's Pass the Torch Party, a celebration of KVIA's legacy. A four decade run comes to an end for KVIA's leader, how it started and how it's going, plus who's taking over. Changes are coming. You know, the last time we had a transition from general manager uh, back here at uh, KBIA was back in 1999. Sunshine today, sunshine tomorrow. We'll talk all about it. Let's take a look back at how it all began. You might even call it extra depth. I've been walking through these doors since December of 1980 and the joy and the challenges never end. Neither does the change. Gary is long gone, Stella and Rick no longer here, Stephanie and Eric endure. Meanwhile, my two-decade run as GM is ending and Brenda is soon taking over. And this is my office of 23 years and as I come in I'm reminded of the article I wrote about how I met my wife Merica. I was hitchhiking in Europe. We had a car crash and she nursed me back to health. A Hollywood story. The byproduct of our calamitous meeting the two daughters we're very proud of, Bridget, a headache doctor in California, Sabine, a plastic surgeon in Atlanta. Here are my two degrees from blue collar institutions, the UTEP minors a masters and the Stephen F. Austin State University lumberjacks, my undergraduate. Sports have been a major part of my career. Here's Don Haskins, the bear and uh, Don King, my anti-hero. This is my Texas Longhorn football corner. I shot 18 straight years of sideline video for the Red River rivalry, Texas and Oklahoma. And here's the 1969 football signed by the Texas Longhorn National Championship team. And here are my medals for endurance sports. My most recent accomplishment, the 125th running of the Boston Marathon back in October. This award is very special to me. 1986 Best Sportscast, State of Texas. And here, my induction into the El Paso Athletic Hall of Fame in the media category, 2007. And let's not forget about our great company, NPG, the retirement party for John Kinnicky. He hired me to be general manager at KVIA. Here's an article in the El Paso Times shortly after I became general manager in 1999. Ramon Renteria writes, Anyone who's ever worked with Kevin Lovell insists that he is stern, exceedingly demanding, and at times hard-headed. But don't expect it to phase the veteran journalist. And quoting me back then, I can be difficult, but people recognize that I am no more demanding of anyone than I am of myself. And I'm joined now by the man of not just the next half hour, but the focus of the last week, Kevin Lovell. First of all, you held the official retirement party on Wednesday of last week. Why was it so important to see all of the KVIA alum that we saw? Why did you want to get everybody together? I wanted to have fun. I wanted to get people together because when you work at a television station, it's such hard work. It's demanding. It's deadlines. It's pressure. It's a lot of times bad schedules and, and low pay to start. And, and everyone who spends a day, a week, a month, uh, uh, years or a career at a TV station, you remember those days like none before or any other job you ever have. And, I, and, and, and so people that came back from decades past, even they've gone on to other walks of life or stayed in the broadcast business, they remember every day at a TV station. You said something at the end of that story that we ran just before we came back out here, which is that you 
push everybody just the way you push yourself. And I will say that you, <laughs> I, when I was on Good Morning El Paso, I would get text messages from you at 6 a.m. Um, I know people on the weekend crew often get text messages from you. Sometimes Eric and I get text messages in the evening. You are always on, you're always pushing, but like you said, you, you try to set the example for doing it yourself, and I wanna thank you for that. But what drives your passion? Well, let me just say that generally, as the years progressed, I, I only came in with texts or messages if I knew that we were going to repeat something so we could correct it for the next hit, so to speak. So, you know, I, I just wanted to make sure that we got it right if we misspell. Even, la even last night, which uh, we're taping on, on Friday here, but on Thursday night, I, I had the news on at 6. I saw a misspelling and I went charging down, the, you know. <laughs> Try to be nice about it, and I am, but you just, you have to be w wired in all the time. At least I had to be, to be a general manager and a news director and, and all the other jobs I held before that. You, if you don't, you'll get eaten alive. The competition's fierce. The viewers demand the very best product, and you just got to give it to them. And that's really what it comes down to is trying to deliver the best product. What do you think... Uh, makes the best product for our viewers. Uh, having the best people like you, Stephanie. Oh. <laughs> and and having Brenda Deonda Swan to take over as general manager and she has faithfully survived working under me since nineteen ninety eight and she's a young woman. But <laughs> she has learned so much and she's gonna take the good, throw out the bad of me, and she's gonna do spectacularly well. And we have such a good team and yes, there's new generations uh, that pass. Uh, we welcome back Gary Warner, Suzanne Michaels, Estella Costas, Rick Cabrera from past generations and we got you and Eric Elkin and Doppler Dave and Hillary Florin and and you know we've got good talent you got to find it develop it and you got to have people that have the drive as you do. So Kevin in all of your time in television news what do you think was the the role that you had that was the most fun or where you learned the most? Where I had the most fun or role well most fun had to be the, uh, and, and we're going to talk about it a little bit later, but that's the fruitcake story. <laughs> uh, because it just keeps, it keeps giving, keeps coming back. <laughs> Probably for, this is its grand finale tonight. Um, but it's just, you've got to be flexible, extremely. You've got to be focused. And w what I've been able to do is, yes, I drive people crazy, but I like to have a good time. I like to smile, I like to laugh, and I do praise. A lot of praise. You've got to do that. So you got to have that mix. Because if I was just a, um, you know, a zealot, people would hate me. So I can't, you know, I show that face sometimes when I get frustrated. But then I, I back it up and I realize the good qualities far outweigh the bad. And and I always recognize that with uh, all the people that I've worked with. And like I said earlier, a lot of passion drives what you do and and your motivation to always push everybody to be better. Um, you have not phoned it in either. This is the <laughs> so ever since you announced your retirement, you have been here every day. You attend our meetings in the afternoon. Um, you're chiming in in the morning. You were just in a meeting that we had um, earlier today. So why haven't you phoned it in? Most people I, I, phone it in when they're, I, when they're I've retiring. I've never been able to do that. I can't do it till, the, till my dying breath. I cannot phone it in. So the, the, and whenever I walk out the door for the final time, then it will hit me. But you were asking me before we started taping here, how do I feel? I don't know. I, I, I finally was sitting down for a moment and reflecting, but I'm, but you know, I'll, I'll move to, on to my next chapter, whatever I do after this, and, and I'll still be watching and monitoring oh, news, but I will not be, I've today. got to let it go. I've got, I'm, I'm not going to get, you're not going to be getting a text from me. Oh, okay. <laughs> In the middle we'll of a 10 o'clock newscast. <laughs> Stephanie, what were you thinking? <laughs> Maybe we'll get emails instead, so you can think about it a little more. Yeah. Well, we'll talk more about uh, what is next for you and the rest of the station. In just a bit, we're going to come back with more with Kevin Lovell. This is ABC 7 Extra. Hi everyone, David Muir here from ABC's World News Tonight and from all of us here, we want to congratulate Kevin Lovell on your retirement. Your decades of work as news director and general manager at KVIA. Texas is lucky to have you. You've had an extraordinary career and if anyone deserves this next chapter, it's you. An awful lot can change overnight. We want to get straight to two major breaking news stories this morning. Overnight, New Mexico State Police announcing that the McBride fire has turned deadly. ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso knows you need to get up to speed fast. An auto shop in East El Paso has gone up in flames this morning. The ABC 7 Alert Center is Good Morning El Paso's tool for the latest updates to keep your family safe. You can see just the damage of the business here. The roof collapsed. Only on ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso.
We've made a major upgrade to the ABC7 studios. But the team you know and trust still has the same commitment you expect when it comes to complete coverage of breaking news. This is a lot more than new furniture and monitors. We've also made a major investment in behind the scenes technology. We've enhanced our ability to make complex stories understandable with big, bold graphics. Always searching for new ways to serve you. ABC 7, where news comes first. When a big change in the weather is coming to the borderlands, a first gusty, alert is the StormTrack weather team signal to be prepared. We could see gusts up to 50 miles per hour. We issue ABC 7 first alerts for times like this when we have blowing dust and sand, reduced visibilities, and strong winds. We do it days in advance to keep your family in the know and keep them safe. First alerts. One more way the ABC 7 StormTrack weather team helps you plan your day and keep your family safe. When you don't keep your eyes on what you're doing, it can be downright dangerous to you and others, especially when you're behind the wheel. Put your phone down. Heads up, Texas. Welcome back to ABC 7 Extra. I'm Stephanie Valle. KVIA ABC 7 carries a legacy of bringing you relevant local news and offering context, depth, and perspective you won't find anywhere else. Let's take a look back at how we arrived at this point. Committed to excellence, whether we are born and raised here or made El Paso our home, whether in front of the cameras or behind the scenes, we are part of the fabric of this community. Many of our talented alums move on to top TV markets. Others remain here to continue growing our station. The dedication of our employees to El Paso and Las Cruces is recognized by our viewers through dominant ratings and with prestigious awards from our peers. From the Texas AP's Overall Excellence Award to the National Association of Broadcasters Service to Children Award, ABC 7's commitment to quality storytelling has been recognized through the decades, including most recently the Edward R. Murrow National Award for Excellence in Innovation. That spirit of ingenuity is in our DNA. ABC 7 was first at the website. First to live stream. First at 4 p.m. and at 4.30 a.m. First and still the only with weekend morning newscasts. ABC 7 is connected to the community also by supporting worthy causes and special partnerships like the one with UTEP Athletics, making us the official home of the miners. We work tirelessly to serve the borderland by going farther, like we do with our New Mexico Mobile Newsroom, delivering daily with weather and traffic on the sevens on the ratings giant Good Morning El Paso, and going deeper with extra depth, bringing context and perspective you won't find anywhere else. And we cannot forget about the more than 40 year run of our freewheeling Friday night high school football show, the Borderland Blitz. And now an amazing on air transition. The Bradleys made a big investment in ABC 7 and the Borderland, a brand new news set as dazzling as anything anywhere around the country to enhance the way we tell stories of the Borderland. Tonight, as we recognize KVI's legacy, we look to the future as KVI's veteran news director, Brenda Deanda Swan, brings her skill set, work ethic, and calm presence to lead our great organization. Brenda takes over for Kevin Lovell, whose 23 years of continuous GM service is the longest in El Paso and Texas. ABC 7 proud of its role in the community and still a great place to be. We are ABC 7, where news comes first. And now we're back with KVIA's retiring general manager, Kevin Lovell, and incoming general manager, Brenda Deanda Swan, also our very longtime news director. So, Brenda, you have quite a history here as well. You started 24 years ago, audio operator, moved on to assignments editor, and then our promotions director, then our news director. And now you're taking on a brand new role as general manager. How are you feeling? Uh, such a huge responsibility, Stephanie, and, and I'm so grateful that Kevin gave me so much opportunity. I think the past few days we've been seeing a lot of the faces that we've grown up with and the faces of people who have crossed by KVIA, and you can see that the em enormous talent and development machine that we've had here, and Kevin has given us so many opportunities. Um, it's a privilege. It's a privilege. 
Is there anything that you anticipate taking on as your your first your first motion as the general manager? There are so many things to do, and so many that I still don't know what they are. Um, and that's that's the exciting thing. Just learning learning a lot about the sales side. Mm -hmm. Being in news, we really do keep things separate. So that's a whole new world, and and I'm I'm enjoying it a lot. Kevin, you watched Brenda grow into the powerhouse leader that she is in our newsroom. Um, is there anything that you would like the audience to know about Brenda? She's a model of decorum, a model of professionalism. <laughs> she is wonderful in human resources and dealing with people. And she's much better at it in this generation than, than you know, I came from get it done, you know, screaming coaches. That, that's what I grew up in, in mm -hmm. one of my generation. And, that's not how you manage anymore. And I, I've had to tone it down through the years to try to adapt to today's uh, youth because it's a, generally a, a young person's business. And Brenda has those skill sets to, to make this station continue to thrive and, and to adapt to, to today. Both of you have been behind the scenes for a long time. Um, and, and a lot of our viewers may, you know, may not know who you are or your roles here, but, but you do carry on the legacy of this station and the importance of, of setting a pace and a tone for our newsroom. So if you could just tell our viewers a little bit about the importance of the legacy and carrying on that legacy. That is absolutely present um, every day, and I carry it with me. I was, I was so fortunate to work when Gary Warner was here. And, you know, having that, understanding that, People like him and people that our viewers may not know or may not have heard about every day come to work and they try to do the right thing and they try to tell the stories as best as we can and, and be respectful to the audience and res respect their time. And, you know, I carry that legacy. When, when Gary retired is when I was about to become news director. Mm -hmm. And I took that on and I said, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, how special is this? And, and then... Estella retired and you know we have these giants and now Kevin is retiring and, and I feel that I feel that responsibility and I felt that on the new side and now I feel it on the sales side mm -hmm. because Stephanie I, as I learn more and more about that side the small businesses trust us with their vacation money and they give them to us so that we can help them connect with our viewers and bigger businesses give us their investment money also mm -hmm. to help us. And so it's this, this bond and this trust that people have with us. And the viewers, they trust that we're gonna get things right and that we're going to be working to get answers and, and to balance stories and really be accurate. And so I, I feel it, I, it's a responsibility and that's, that's what I want to make sure that everyone in the team understands that it's a big deal and it's, it's people like Kevin and everyone who, who has contributed to, to this legacy and and being number one it's it's a lot of work do you want to chime in on that kevin i would just like to say that brenda's first language is spanish and <laughs> listen to how eloquent she is <laughs> she's from mexico mm -hmm. came to utep and you can just listen to brenda and see how she operates as we've been able to do for many years and know that we're on the right direction wonderful you're watching ABC 7 Extra, and still ahead, we have final words. Kevin Lovell is retiring. I never thought I'd say those words. Rob Elgis here with ABC 7 in Chicago. Put him up there with the other legends of KVIA. Gary Warner, Estella Casas. Kevin believed in young journalists like me, giving us a chance to flourish in El Paso and move on to wonderful things. So congratulations to Kevin. And this isn't all bad for the newsroom. Y'all will never have to run that fruitcake story during the holidays again. Think all senior care is the same? Think Bien Vivir. As El Paso's only all-inclusive senior health program, you can expect a community of friends, your own team of health care providers, a healthy nutrition program, and therapy that improves your quality of life. We can even fill your prescriptions, all under one roof and with no out-of-pocket costs. So enjoy your independence and leave your health care needs to us. It's not too good to be true. It's Bien Vivir. Call us today. 
when more than 120,000 of you were overcharged for your trash collection. A glitch that I didn't know about until I got my water bill. ABC 7's investigative team went to work for you. I filed an open records request that is now giving us better insight as to what went wrong. Here's what I found. Going deeper. Here's what was happening behind the scenes. Getting you answers. We are working on a solution for affected customers. When the issues affect your pocketbook. The water utility promised to refund that money. You can count on ABC 7 where news comes first. We know you count on ABC 7 to keep you informed. Our alert center brings you breaking news as it happens. We put our experience to work for you every day. Finding stories you won't see anywhere else in Texas. And New Mexico. We make it clear and understandable. Bringing you extra context, depth, and perspective. Our team is always tracking. And first to alert you to any important weather changes. ABC 7, where news comes first. The team you know. The team you trust. Well, it's going to be a beautiful sunny day today, and we can expect much more of the same. Of course. Motorcycles are not invisible, but they can seem that way to drivers who aren't paying close attention. Look twice for motorcycles. There's a life riding on it. Welcome back to ABC 7 Extra. I'm joined by Kevin Lovell, the outgoing general manager for KVIA ABC 7 and the incoming GM, Brenda Deandeswan. Now, before we went to commercial, we heard from the former Good Morning El Paso anchor Rob Elgas, and he was saying, finally, no more fruitcake package. <laughs> but he spoke too soon because we do have the final airing of the fruitcake story. Kevin, this just came for you from Aunt Edna. Aunt Edna? I'm not alone. Millions of Americans hate getting fruitcake for Christmas. Buying fruitcake to give to others is one thing, but making it as a holiday gift is cold-blooded. For many, many years, for my family and for friends, and I feel like a fruitcake from my kitchen is like a Christmas card from my heart. Do you really hate fruitcake? I don't like it. <laughs> That's inspired the, the, I saw somebody was delivered a fruitcake at the station, in fact, the one we used, and I go, why would you do that to someone on Christmas? And, and, I, and I said, well, let's use that fruitcake. And of course, the fruitcake was not any good to anybody after we used it because well, we, yeah, we pushed it down the floor. <laughs> oh my goodness. So what is it about this story that spoke to you and, and prompted KVIA to rerun this. Every I, year. I don't know the prompting of it. I, I was gone a, a few years in the early 90s and it was forgotten. And Eric Hughesby, the news director, when I returned, he was then news director preceding Brenda. He suggested it one year. I thought that is really nice. That's very touching. And every year since, I've mandated that we continue to run the fruitcake store. I <laughs> think. <laughs> <laughs> when, when do I gather the family around the the fire? You know, so we can all watch the fruitcake store. Kevin, but, it's endearing when you don't force it on people, well, just like a fruitcake. I'll be in the Pan Am Center, somebody in Las Cruces I've never met in my life, in in the middle of basketball season, two months after Christmas. Kevin Lovell, fruitcake store. It's it's because we run it every year. Yes, and, and so I will I will say the irony is you don't like it when we show people eating on air, Kevin. And that no, package right. ends with you eating yeah, on air. Yeah, it does. Yes, it, that's a good point. I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Why would you do that? Well, that was another era, <laughs> you know. Uh, it is just a, just a different time. 1990 was when we did that story. Kevin, I can't believe that this is going to be probably the last time that we have a conversation with you as my boss. And um, I just want to say thank you for the opportunities oh, 
And I just want to give you an opportunity to, to give your final words. My final words, I guess, would be that I love El Paso and I love Las Cruces. That's why you do it. These are the people we care about. These are the people that tune in. These are the people that consume products. These are the people that live their lives amidst triumphs and tragedies. And our job is to provide a very valuable service. And you do it, and you do it, and you do it extremely well. And I know that this station is in great hands. And it, it was time for me to hang up the rope and, and let the young uns get going. Kevin, you, you said it uh, just now, and I, I didn't bring that up, that you, you chose to live here in the borderland. You're not originally from El Paso, but this has been your home, and, and you, you made it your home, and, and um, you were so proud of, of El Paso and Las it. Cruces, and you, you looked at all of us in the newsroom as your family, and, and we, we are a family, the KVIA family, and, and I just want to thank you again for all of the opportunity and, and for pushing us to be the very best that we could be. Well, and of course, in the little subtle ways I get involved, and Brenda and I were talking because I thought that, I felt that we needed to do extra as this subject, and I certainly wanted Brenda to be introduced and, and hear from her, and of course, more of it's been about me because I'm going away. But you've been here, Stephanie. I mean, you're young. You're a spring chicken, and you've <laughs> been here since you were, what, 19 years old? Yes. I'm not going to say how old you are, but I'm, I'm saying it's a good couple of decades and goodness gracious you're you're so valuable to this community thank you thank you Kevin and Brenda do you have any final words for Kevin thank you <laughs> very heartfelt moments up here because this is this is very going to be very hard when we say goodbye it's it's we've been talking about it for a long time and to to feel like it's finally coming to that point where we're going to see you walk out that door for the mm. last time. It, it's going to be very difficult for us. But again, thank you, Kevin. Oh, but thanks. he remains. He remains. <laughs> what are you going to do in retirement, Kevin? Oh, I, whatever. Uh, whatever I want to do. Somebody told me to say that, and that's a good answer. <laughs> 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 it sounds great. Yes, you'll, you'll have time to do whatever it is that you want to do. Well, thank you both for joining me tonight. And thank you for watching us tonight. I'm Stephanie Valle, and this has been ABC7 Extra. It's its full fury at dusk. 150,000 watts of radiated power. Enough power to illuminate these fluorescent bulbs. And they tell me I won't go sterile. Maybe we'll define it and find out exactly what we got for $4.3 million. So, got my trusty calculator, my hard hat, and my binoculars. Gary and Suzanne, I'm going to start counting. Okay, One, Kevin. Two. We'll check back three, with you later in the newscast to see four, what the count is. Five, so and how much those cinder six, blocks are worth. When we come back, we'll see how Kevin's coming along in his tabulation of bricks that mark the beginning and the end of the Aquatic Center. Let's check back with Kevin now, who is still counting the cinder blocks at the Aquatic Center. Kevin? 3,814. 3, Don't mean to distract you, Kevin. 15. Yes, uh, Gary, Suzanne, they will not allow me access, Silverton or the county, so it's kind of difficult, but I'm keeping it up. I'm up to almost 4,000. We understand New 7's Kevin Lovell is about 12, to finish his count of bricks that make up the skeletal beginning of the now extinct aquatic center. 10,032 cinder blocks. Now I've got to divide that by $4.3 million equals $428.63 per cinder block. Four twenty-eight sixty-three. that is the total. And when you consider that you can buy them for a dollar a piece at the store, not a very good deal. Kevin Lovell has searched high and low for the best deals in El Paso. And at long last, Kevin says he has found the very best deal in town. Kevin, we want to know. Please tell us what is the absolute best deal in El Paso. Suzanne and Gary, please hold on to your britches. Would you please wait just one, min one minute? Now, let me explain this to you. There are a lot of contenders. I've been looking for the best deal for at least the last 10 or 11 years. The original best deal, the Big Bun in downtown El Paso. Still the most incredible dollar burger in Texas. Another cheap place to eat, the school lunch cafeteria. I joined daughter Bridget for lunch, but beware of indigestion if you play chase after eating.